worship is on the screen. I'm going to turn to the left. I can see that screen from there. I'm one step away from being the scripture reading in Braille. So I'm going to be like, Jokes. So. <laughs> I'm struggling. Yeah. How about those hogs? They were so close. So close. Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
restoration of the body, and the life of Christ. see my stole here? Does anybody know what this is? Who is that right there? Does anybody know? Here's a hint. What's that? An ark. Who was on the ark? Noah. Noah was on the ark. And look, there's all the animals. Look, there's a giraffe and all the animals. I used to have a a uh, little boy that came by the door at another church when I wore this, and he always wanted to know where the dinosaurs were. And I said, well, <laughs> they might be there somewhere. He said, but at least there's a giraffe. And I said, yeah, there is a giraffe. Well, does anybody know the story of Noah? What happened to Noah? God came to him and said he wanted him to build what? An ark. What is an ark? It's a big old boat. Because it was going to start raining, and it was going to rain, and it was going to rain, and it was going to rain some more. And so much rain that the whole entire world flooded. But what happened to Noah? He was on the ark. He was safe on the ark. All the animals were safe on the ark. So what does that tell us? Bad things sometimes happen, right? I mean, it's just a matter of fact. Bad things happen in the world, and bad things happen then. But who saved Noah? God. God provided a way for Noah 
because Noah, he loved God, and God loved Noah, and God provided a way for Noah, even though everything around him was just filling with water and falling apart and all this, God saved Noah. So what does that tell us when trouble comes? What's God going to do for us? Is God going to help us like he helped Noah? God provides people. God provides situations. God is always a provider. So the one thing we need to do, no matter how bad things get, is always look to what God is providing. Look to what God is doing. Because guess what God's always up to? Something good. He's always up to something good. Just like in days of Noah, he is up to something good now. Okay? All right, let's pray. Oh God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for the story of Noah and the hope that we find in him. We pray that we can always live with that hope and share that hope in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I, I don't have anything to give you, but guess what? How many of you would go to school? You don't have to go to school tomorrow. <laughs> so that's, that's better than candy, isn't it? Yes, it is. All right. Well, thank you for coming and listening to us. and provide for us and now oh God we want to give back to you we are so thankful we want to give to the work of your kingdom and we pray that as we do what we give will be blessed and multiplied and used for the making of the science your son and our savior Jesus Christ it is in his name that we pray amen
may say for the hymn of preparation. It is number 714, I Know Whom I Have Believed. <laughs> of sin, 
and allows those who trust in him to live abundantly, to live free. And this is what Jesus came to do, to undo what that first Adam did in the garden. But if we follow the, the chronology of the Bible, we're, we're not there yet. We're still back in, in, in the beginning or close to the beginning. In our story today, as we follow the story of Scripture, we are far from the point of Jesus' saving grace. We are at the point in our series uh, where things have gone from bad to worse. And the story of Noah and the Great Flood is uh, a part of that story. And this is probably one of the most beloved and well-known of all of the biblical stories. You ask any child in Sunday school, and, and they can tell you the basics of the story. They may not get every detail right, but they can tell you that Noah, on God's instruction, built an ark to protect his family and a pair of every kind of animal from a flood that would soon destroy the earth. They can tell you that God opened the heavens and there, there was rain for 40 days and 40 nights while Noah and his family and the animals were secure and safe on the earth. They can probably also tell you that when the floodwaters receded, a dove was released. And finally, finally, after a long period of time, it discovered dry land. But was that really the story? Is that the gist of what this story is trying to teach us? I mean, we, we can ask questions about this story. Was the pair of every kind of animal? Or was it seven pair of clean and one pair of unclean animals? That, that's in there. You know, we began to ask questions about well, how, how big really was this ark, and what, what is gopher wood by, by you know, uh, what, what, what is that? And, and we become fascinated by the flood. And you know, we become fascinated by details of the building of the ark. And we even become fascinated with the search for Noah's ark. Whatever happened to it? Where did it go? And we also ask questions, why in the world did Noah include certain animals and insects on the ark, such as spiders, mosquitoes, and gnats? I mean, why not just let them drown? But when we start dealing with these minute details, we miss the whole point of this story. The story of the flood relates to and in some ways is parallel to the creation narratives that we talked about uh, two weeks ago found in Genesis chapter 